So today's Noir Vember film was also uh, a new release. This was Tom Ford's Nocturnal Animals, which is based on a novel by Austin Wright called Tony and Susan. I have not read the novel, uh, but I've read a synopsis and it sounds like I probably wouldn't enjoy the novel all that much, but I enjoyed the film immensely. And I actually, I finished watching it about two hours ago. And usually I do these reviews like right away because I want to get my thoughts like out. But I had so much thinking to do about this film um, that I had to keep sort of working through what I was thinking. And I can't really say much of what I was thinking without like completely spoiling the film. Um, but I also read a bunch of reviews to try to see what other people were thinking. And, and even the people who seemed to enjoy this film s seemed to not give its complexity as much credit as I... I think the film deserves. I think it's it's got a lot to say, and it's got a lot of ways to interpret what it's saying, and um, that I really enjoy. What I really hate is when people see a film that's sort of complicated and um, bizarre and weird, and maybe not that easy to be like it means this. They're like. They're trying to be David Lynch, but they, you know, no one's David Lynch. And it's like, David Lynch isn't even David Lynch. You know what I mean? David Lynch believes that what he puts what his film is, and then he believes that everybody interprets it differently because everybody brings something else to their experiences. Um, and and uh, the, to experience artists reflect yourself, you're finding a reflection of yourself in it. So... Even David Lynch isn't isn't David Lynch. Like w w the actual David Lynch is, and his film, what his films are for him, is not what any single critic or anyone else thinks they are. Because whatever it is, is what it is for you, right? So in comparing uh, someone to David, someone's work to a David Lynch work, and then saying it's not as it's not the you know it's not it's not David Lynch. It's like well yeah, of course it's not David Lynch. Um, just I just think that's lazy, and and dumb. I also hate critics that like say, you know, I think this movie is bad and then they don't explain with any details why they think the movie is bad and I'm like, why, you know, you have to back your opinion up with like analysis or something. Um, third thing, and this is like, I'm sorry, I'm doing like, I'm not really talking about the movie, I'll get back to the movie, but the third thing, I really hate when people use melodrama as um, a, an insult, as if like, it's, it's a fucking genre, all right? If you don't like melodrama, say, I don't like melodrama, and this is a melodrama, so I didn't like it. That's fine. But if you're like, it's bad because it's a melodrama, no. That's not how that works. It's like saying it's bad because it's a horror movie, or it's bad because it's a comedy. Like, melodrama has its roots in art, and melodrama is its own way of being art. That's, ugh, anyways. I didn't think this film was all that melodramatic, to be honest, either. So when I saw that, I was like, what? Um, it's very pulpy is what it is. And rightly earns its neo-noir uh, title in terms of sort of pulp noir and, and marital, marital stress noir. But also, and that's the, the main outside layer of the film. The film is the film, and then there's a novel within the film that she's reading that's a reflection sort of maybe of her ex-husband's uh, working through something she did to him. That's sort of the main plot. Amy Adams being the the, the ex-wife. Jake Gyllenhaal being the ex-husband and the main character of the novel. So the novel within it, so the outer, te outer part layer of the film is very almost, but not quite, melodramatic sort of relationship noir a la, a la like um, Leave Her to Heaven or um, I'm trying to think of another big relationship sort of noir. Um, what's that one? Which one I'm trying to think of? Oh, like the two Mrs. Carols, like something like that. Um, and then the novel within the, the thing is a straight up desert noir, sort of Jim Thompson-esque kind of film. And... It's, it has a great performance from Michael Shannon as the as the detective. Like he's just, God, he's good. And uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson is the psychopath, also very good. Um, what was I gonna say? 
Oh, and there's a surprise Michael Sheen in the movie for like a second. I didn't know that until I, his name popped up in the credits. And I was like, Michael Sheen! Yay! So, the, the film, you know, sort of like I said, this film, the novel is sort of a reflection of the feelings that the ex-husband is trying to work through. And there's a lot of critique on the film for being sort of misogynistic. But I think that if if you're reading it as misogynistic, you're, you're reading the film as if it's saying that it's okay that he wrote this novel or that it's condoning the actions that are happening in the novel. And I honestly think that's a really lazy reading of the film. And that Tom Ford is really sort of exploring this idea of toxic masculinity and this idea that, that emo being sensitive is weak and that, um, and how because we raise men to feel that way, they feel inadequate when, and, 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 f and feel weak when they're, they're not. Um, but it also is sort of just exploring this idea that um, men sort of have a right to, like, dictate how women should behave both in their relationships and you know, after the relationship, because mostly what is happening is their relationship deteriorated because she tried to express how she was feeling and he wouldn't listen and wouldn't, um, sort of work on, he, I mean, he tries to claim that she's not working on it, but, but really if she's hit a place where she can't work on it anymore because he kept not listening, that's not on her. And I think the film shows that. And then the fact that he would then fester on this for 19 years and put it all in this piece of art and then sort of shove it in her face, it, it does not make you like the, the male writer. It does not make you think he's he's working through his life pretty well. And, and it's a bit passive-aggressive, really. I mean, it's not even a bit passive-aggressive. It's passive-aggressive. And, and so to think that the film is condoning what he's, what he's done is not... I don't think it's right. Um, the ending, I think, is fascinating. I've read I read this horrible, horrible, like write up on it that was just the most basic reading of a film ever, and then it was on a site that pays, which means this dude got paid to write the most basic reading of a film ever, and I find that really offensive. Um, the, I think the ending is open to like so many interpretations, so many things that it could mean. I love that. Um, so if you've seen the movie and you want to tweet at me about what you think the ending means, hopefully you know what my Twitter is because you're watching these videos, um, uh, you can tell me <laughs> and we can discuss it because I have at least four things that the ending could mean, um, which is great. And so I guess to top it off, uh, all the performances are great. I think the two different Jill and Halls are great. I think Amy Adams is fantastic. I think it's um, critique of the hollowness of the uh, Los Angeles art world is great, and the hollowness of like LA's elite is fantastic. I really love that. I love it when films go there. Um, I think Tom Ford, if, if anybody really understands um, this world, is a world he's been in for a very long time, and it's a world that he is being very critical of. And, um, you know, it's an insider's view. Um, from several points of view, because you see this sort of cynical side coming from the Amy Adams character, and you see sort of the, like, just enjoy it. It's much better than the real world side from um, Michael Sheen. Um, so you can use a little, a little of both. Um, um, oh, and the last thing is uh, there's a bunch of people who are like, what do you expect from a fashion designer? Oh, everything looks like it's made for Gucci, but that's about it. And I saw one person call him a fashionista as a pejorative term, and I'm just like, you can go jump off a cliff with that bullshit. Like, there's this idea that the fashion world is vapid, and like maybe, it, it, you know, aspects of it are, aspects of pretty much any world are vapid. Someone like Tom Ford is a very intellectual fashion designer, and yes, there are many, many fashion designers who are intellectual in the way that they approach fashion and the way they approach the construction of clothing and the way they approach design. And to belittle that means you actually don't understand that world at all and you don't respect it because you don't understand it and you just see the glitter and you don't actually see it for its its artistic value and I, I hate that. 
I really hate that. Um, you, I mean, you wouldn't want someone to be like, oh, you're talking about movies for a living? Oh, that's, that's like, why don't you do something that's actually worth it for the world? And it's like, you, you feel the same pride in you, what you do, hopefully, um, that fashion designers do. And that, and you probably put as much intellect and thought into what, using your brain to criticize something as they do to make art and it out of their clothes. So pretty much don't shit on the fashion industry and don't shit on fashion designers because it's just lazy. Um, this is a great film. I really enjoyed it. Works for a noir member. It works for pretty much anything. It's out in a bunch of theaters right now. Written, directed, produced by Tom Ford. He's fantastic. If you like Tom Ford, if you like Amy Adams, if you like Gyllenhaal, if you like uh, sort of Jim Thompson esque, I saw a lot of people calling it Peck and Paw esque. It, it feels more in line with a Jim Thompson novel than it does with a Peck and Paw film, I think. But that's because I don't like Peck and Paw films, but I like Jim Thompson novels, and I I liked this, so it feels feels more Thompson esque to me. Um, also, shout out to the whole Amy Adams and then the Isla Fisher playing the Amy Adams version uh, or the fictionalized Amy Adams. That's see what you did there and I enjoy it oh oh and last thing do I have enough time let's see what's oh this is probably ending well anyways don't talk during movies there were some people narrating the entire experience of watching this movie and I wanted to kill them do not talk during a movie I did not pay to see this movie to hear you narrating it if you can't go to a movie you can't understand a movie without um narrating every last essence of the movie then don't go see a movie in theaters because it's public space. Go watch it. Go rent it and watch it at home. <sighs> okay, this is, I think I'm hitting the limit. So have a good night and uh, watch this film.